A furore, furore has erupted after the Tobacco Institute of Australia silenced three speakers at a national summit on passive smoking. The Institute threatened court action if the members of a working party from the National Health and Medical Research Council revealed their findings. Joining us now is Susan Povey, Corporate Affairs Director of Cigarette Manufacturer WD and HO Wills, and anti-smoking lobbyist Stephen Woodward. Mr Woodward, Ms Povey, welcome to the program. Good morning. Mr Thank Woodward, you. what allegation do you make about the situation with this National Health and Medical Research Council report? Well, there were three professors of medicine from universities that sat on the NHMRC panel that reviewed the health effects of passive smoking and they were prevented from talking to a meeting of scientists and doctors in Canberra yesterday because of actions by the Tobacco Institute through its solicitors Clayton Utes. Ms Povey, is that right? Well, actually we're not involved, Wills is not involved in this legal dispute, but I think it's interesting to point out that um, this was voluntary agreement that the NHMRC undertook. So <clears throat> they were not gagged. They basically ag gave that agreement, this is subject to court action, and therefore they were not asked to, to comment on the case. Mr Woodward, why did these three researchers suddenly voluntarily decide to gag themselves then? Well, they didn't voluntarily decide to gag themselves. I mean, these are people who are teachers of medicine in faculties of Australian universities that make their living by doing research and reporting that research to the public, to their students. And they all accepted invitations to attend the AMA conference on passive smoking yesterday in Canberra, a conference attended by people representing Suzanne Povey's tobacco company, representing other tobacco companies, and these professors were gagged by a letter from the solicitors acting for the Tobacco Institute. I had to spend the weekend preparing an alternate paper which one of the professors would otherwise have given. Now, he pulled out on Friday because of the pressure from the Tobacco Institute's solicitors, and it's wrong for Ms Povey to suggest that they weren't gagged. It's not corporate harassment here of scientists, Ms Povey? Absolutely not. I mean, the whole issue of this situation is that we believe in it is an industry in free speech. Now, the interesting part is, Mr Woodward, that yesterday's conference was supposed to be a platform to get out the facts on environmental tobacco smoke. And this man has actually slammed our company, claiming that we're going to close our factory, that our production is down, that our um, market share is down, that we're going to be out of business in a couple of years. Now, to me, that's the real issue. If we're talking about free speech here, we're talking about the correct version of the facts, and that's certainly something that we haven't heard today. Um, I, I ask you, you know, why is it that you made those outrageous comments that cause potential damage to our, to our company? That's just not right. This isn't about gagging people. Mr Woodward, you and Ms Povey uh, go back a long way, do you not? Uh, actually, Ms Povey, I think, is uh, an early comer to the game. I go back a lot further with the Today program. Uh, Liz Hayes inter has interviewed me over eight years ago on tobacco. But you've had, uh, you've crossed swords with the tobacco industry for years, haven't you? Oh, indeed. I've been an advocate for the State Cancer Councils and the National Heart Foundation trying to get people to smoke fewer cigarettes so there's less cancer, less heart disease, less emphysema caused by smoking. Miss Povey, on the other hand, is working for a tobacco company that wants to sell more cigarettes and they don't apparently care if more people die from cancer and heart disease. Well, one of these three researchers, Dr Simon Chapman, is going to a conference in Hong Kong later this week where outside Australia's jurisdiction, freed from the threat of any federal court injunction, he he's going to apparently discuss his paper publicly. Have you got any problems with that? No, not, absolutely not. Um, it's the whole issue of free speech is very important. What we're interested in is a fair and balanced debate on this subject. It's something that the AMA yesterday were going to do at their conference. But if you're interested in free speech and fair and balanced discussion, why, seek, why does your industry seek to injunct these researchers and suppress their paper. Why let, let's have it out and we'll all talk about it. It's important to have a fair and balanced debate outside. This report was not a fair and balanced paper. Now, as I said before, we're not actually involved. Know? Because the, the issue of this paper didn't discuss all of the science. If you look at all of the science on this issue, it shows overwhelmingly that the issue of passive smoking is that there's no meaningful link between passive smoking and lung cancer in non-smokers. But the real issue here is the facts that Mr Woodward put out yesterday. Our company is not about to close down. Our production is up on last year. We'll be producing 8 billion cigarettes this year. 
and we're looking after the three million Australian smokers who choose to smoke and so, enjoy our product. I'll be back to you in a minute, Mr Woodward, but Ms Pobie, you'd be quite happy to say, sit in a car with your kids and smoke your head off, would you, and have all the smoke go over them? You'd say that's not a problem? No, I would say that adult Australian have the right to smoke, but they need to exercise extreme caution around young children, just as they would in taking care of young children, the way they dress them, the way they feed them. It's very important that, that adults take care around young children, and the average Australian just wouldn't do that. They, they know that it's important to look after young children, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that when it comes to smoking. Mr Woodward, this uh, conference in Hong Kong, I gather there are suggestions that the tobacco industry is sending someone to keep an eye or spy on Dr Chapman, is that right? Yes, Paul, we, that was something else that we had to investigate on the weekend. And let me come to that point, but I just want to go back to what Suzanne said. She was saying that she would not smoke in a car with her children around because it's important that we don't smoke around our children. She then doesn't go the next step and say, why it is important that we don't smoke around our children. She's got a peg on her tongue. We don't smoke around our children because passive smoking is dangerous to children, to adults. And that's why we don't smoke around children. But she can't say those words because her tobacco company paymasters won't let her. We'll let her say them. <laughs> Would you like to say them? That is not the reason. That is absolutely not the reason. We know from all of the evidence that what you're saying is wrong. What we're saying is it's common sense. People know that they don't smoke in the eyes of children. That's just not common sense. What but why if it's not a problem? It's not common sense, though, to smoke in the eyes of children who can't, who can't say that it's, it's irritating them or it's of discomfort to them. I mean, the issue is that or all Or causing the them lung cancer or causing them heart disease. Go on, Miss Povey, yes, let's tell let's more about the health effects of smoking. Don't gag yourself just because of your paycheck. The overwhelming majority of the evidence, and this is where the anti-smoking lobby don't want to debate, they want to debate the emotion of this issue, they don't want to debate the science. The overwhelming it's very majority emotional. when of people get sick and die show... because of cigarette smoking, both active smoking and passive smoking. It's very emotional when somebody dies of lung cancer. And issue... people have to accept that smoking is an emotional issue because it goes to health of children, health of adults, and tobacco companies just don't care if people get sick, providing they can sell more cigarettes. Mr Woodward, Ms Pogue, I'm sorry, time has uh, got away from us. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.